District 115, Board of Education meeting for May 13th, 2019. May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Weinbrenner? Here. Mr. Mormon? Here. Ms. Davis? Here. Mr. Noble? Here. Ms. Zinzer? Here. Dr. Nemicus? Here. Mr. Lane sends his regrets. We have a quorum. All right. Uh, we would normally begin with the President's report, Mr. Lane had was called away for a medical, um, family medical issue. So I am not going to try to do that. I'm going to have enough on my hands just getting us through this meeting. Uh, all right, so with that, I'm going to turn it to Mr. Sinek for the Superintendent's report. And I would like to hand off to Dr. Holland and JD to begin. So I do um, want to briefly acknowledge JD O'Keen, who has been our student rep all year long, um, oftentimes and mostly flying solo, um, leading the charge and keeping us updated on student affairs. So I want to personally thank you um, for your commitment to our school, um, the student body as well. Um, he represented you well. Um, he's also met with me throughout the year to talk about different student concerns, holding all of us accountable for making sure that um, we're following up on some of the, the needs and issues that come up with, uh, um, amongst the student body. But JD is very thoughtful, very caring. Um, he has a work ethic, ethic like none other, and um, I'm really excited about your future. So I wanted to thank you for um, being an advocate for all Scouts. He's going to kick us off. All right. So uh, before I begin, uh, I'm J.D. O'Keefe, I'm the student body president. Um, I would like to say congrats on to the, to the newly elected board members. Um, you have a very crucial role in the education process of all the kids in the Lake Forest community. Um, Lake Forest High School has been very busy over the past month, month and a half. Um, all Shook Up was a slamming success last month. The cast did an amazing job. And a special thanks to Mr. Wanniger for directing the whole thing. Um, he did an amazing job. Uh, last week and finishing up this week are AP exams, so students are busy studying for those. Um, over the weekend, we had prom, which was a massive success. Uh, big shout out to the junior class cabinet for planning an amazing night. I think everyone had an awesome time. Um, sadly, as my job comes to an end, it was announced today the result of the election um, for next year's executive board. And Sarah Byers, the current junior class president, will be taking over the role of student body president for next year. So as my job comes to a close, I'd like to thank the members of the board. Thank you for giving me, the students, a platform to voice our concerns and an open door to pave the way for a better LFHS. A special thank you to Dr. Holland. She has continued to support me in my pursuit of making LFHS a better and continually showing me what it means to be a good leader. Thank you for being an amazing role model. We have accomplished a lot this year from different initiatives to fixing the traffic and senior parking. But a lot of work needs to be done. LFHS is one of the top schools in the country, and I cannot wait to see where it will go from here. Thank you for everything. It has been an honor to serve as your student body president. Thank you, JD. This week on Wednesday, May 15th, in the RMA at 7 p.m., we have a seminar led by our counselors planning for junior year and beyond. Um, we want to welcome and encourage families to attend. Next Tuesday, um, we have our wellness walk. Um, we are hoping for great weather. We will be clapping out our seniors and our retirees during that time. During that time. On June 3rd, we have pitch night which is an exciting experience for our business incubator program. And we're encouraging everyone to come out and um, cheer on our teams that are going to be vying for um, funding. I do want to mention, JD mentioned AP exams, but I do want to mention something about graduation. If there's anyone out there who has questions or concerns around tickets and how we allocate tickets, please feel free to call my office. Um, and um, we will assist you with any of the questions that you have or any of the needs that you have. Thank you. All right, and JD, you looked awesome in your tux, by the way, from prom. It's really great. How many of you guys were in the musical? All right, 
So I recognize some of you. I don't know that there were some of you in the pit as well and in the stage crew, right? As I talked to a couple different people after the, uh, the musical, and they said uh, they thought it was the best musical we had ever done. And it was such a fun musical, and you guys did such a terrific job. I uh, can't say congratulations enough for that. I hope it was as much fun to be in as it was to watch, because it was really good to watch. So the rest of the superintendent's report, I wanted to share that in our April meeting, Allison Wagner and Lisa Waters joined us to celebrate the purchase of a new Fazioli F212 piano. More recently on Friday, May 3rd, the applause hosted a donor recognition concert, complete with a very snappy uh, brochure at our high school. As much as any event in recent memory, this event underlined the extraordinariness of our district. The concert accomplished this in two ways. First, our students, uh, Rana Muratoglu, with us tonight, uh, Ava Sharman, uh, Jane and Grace Makas, Priya Krishnaswamy, Adam Clayton, and Katie Pierce performed various pieces either on or accompanied by the new Fazioli piano. As ever, our students are our best ambassadors, and they were stunning. Second, the concert demonstrated in physical form through the attendance of many of the donors the power of a vision and a community with resources like ours. In the short span of three months, Applause was able to take a dream and turn it into the reality for our students. You don't have to know anything about music or pianos to recognize the fact that the new Fazioli piano sounds breathtaking. I'd like to say again to Allison, Lisa, Applause, and a large number of donors for the Fazioli F212 piano. Thank you for providing this resource for our students and for inspiring us all. I'd also like to keep the board and community apprised of our facility planning committee work. Last week, architects spent two days in the building meeting with students, teachers, staff, and administrators, hearing from them ideas they have about what works, what doesn't work in our building, and ideas for the architect's consideration on how to improve it. This week, the committee will meet to review the themes of those findings, as well as the survey results from students and staff to date. In two weeks, we'll be taking a tour of neighboring high schools, Highland Park, New Trier, and Stevenson, to see their facilities and recent construction firsthand. And that completes the superintendent's report. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll ask if there are any members of the public who would like to address the board. Go ahead. Uh, if you can uh, give us your name and go up to the microphone, that would be great. I should also tell you that it's kind of a, an odd experience. You talk to us and we listen, but we don't necessarily talk back to you. Our job here is to let the community talk to us and, and to listen intently to what you say. That's all right. Thank you. Um, so my name is Alma Mackick. I'm a junior at the high school, and I'm here representing AP Environmental Science. And I had a concern about the plastic water bottles that we sell in the cafeteria. Um, so our recycling system is kind of shoddy at the high school. A lot of kids aren't very educated on how, like what materials to recycle and whatnot. A lot of times they'll put in like dirty plastic containers, which plastic is fine to recycle, but it can't be dirty. And so, you know, one bad apple ruins a whole bunch. So an entire load of things that could be recycled aren't and a lot of the things that are contaminated by such actions are the plastic water bottles. So in eliminating the sell the selling of the plastic water bottles in the coffee shop and in the cafeteria I think would greatly reduce the amount of waste that we put out of the high school and I think it would save the school a lot of money and I mean it um, in, uh, what's the word like I guess motivating kids to bring in their reusable bottles to refill up the awesome water, awesome, awesome water fountains that we have at the school, you know, like the ones that refill your water bottles for you, I think it's a really, I think it's a safe bet, and I think it's something that could like really help our high school and something that could save us per, like a lot of money in the long run. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. I really appreciate it. Um, the one thing I can do is ask that Mr. Simic and Dr. Holland, if if you'll follow up with the comments and then will depend on you to come back to the board. Thank you. Is there anyone else who needed to come? Yes, sir. Same drill. If you can give us your name at the microphone, that would be great. Yeah. 
Hi there, uh, my name is Jason Riedel. I'm a junior at the high school. And over the uh, past year that I've been in AP Enviro, it has really enlightened me about a lot of uh, subjects about our school, our policies, and also on how we can be more eco-friendly and environmentally friendly as well. Um, as my uh, fellow student was mentioning, uh, there's an issue with our recycling in the sense that it oftentimes gets contaminated and it's not able to be utilized as we'd want and expect recycling to be. Um, and this puts into question the methods that we do use for recycling and trash and how we could better implement a system that would encourage students to recycle more. Um, out of personal experience and also speaking for my peers, um, in high school, as much as we work hard in our classes, we're also very lazy. And um, it would be very helpful because oftentimes, especially in the cafeteria, the uh, garbage cans are not directly next to the recycling bins. Implementing a system where you have a double bin um, would make it so that it's a lot uh, easier and just less time consuming to just throw your trash in one side and your recycling in the other. Um, of course, this is one just very simple method to try to uh, just increase the chance and likelihood of getting cleaner recycling. And um, there's, of course, other options we can take, and I hope that, uh, that this is a topic that we'll cover in the future for the school. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate it, and we'll, we'll wait to hear back from the administration. Is there anyone else who would like to come? Yes? Hi, my name is Lisa Capsalis. I'm a junior at Lake Forest High School. Um, and I'd just like to, I'm not part of AP Enviro, but I'd just like to make a quick comment about the facilities at our school. I think we have really outstanding, um, having been to visited different high schools for different events, I think we really have outstanding facilities um, and spaces, including the library and classrooms are uh, very well equipped and it's very comfortable, very, uh, for the most part, a very positive working environment. Uh, for studying. However, I, I feel like when comparing spaces, for example, like our library to our bathrooms, there's a huge discrepancy. Um, I've noticed throughout my time in high school, past three years, that there are certain <laughs> girls' bathrooms where like half of the sinks don't work or um, either the, the water temperature is, you know, like one of the two spouts doesn't work. And I know that sounds maybe slightly nitpicky, but I feel like comparing the bathrooms to the amazing facilities we have elsewhere, there's just a really noticeable discrepancy. Sometimes they're, like the paper towel roll is broken. And I know it's up to the students to take care of the facilities that they use, and I know that that's a huge part of it, but it just seems like some of these, um, some of these bathrooms are a little bit outdated, and personally that's something that I'd like to see maybe updated at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else? <laughs> Is there anyone else who would like to comment? Going once? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. It's, I think it's really difficult to get up and, and speak in front of a group like this, so uh, kudos to our students for caring enough to come and do it. Okay, next on the agenda are the reports. The first is Emotional Wellness, CSCI report from Dr. Sasson and John Maher. Well, good evening. It's not going to be easy to follow the concision and the targeted comments that were made by the students, so I thank you, and um, we, will, we will do our best to, to be a good follow-up to that. I am Patrick Sass, and welcome to the new board members. Um, I'm the Director of Educational Services. We're going to speak briefly tonight on the topic of our wellness initiative. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to this. Um, for decades, social-emotional learning uh, or skills were viewed as peripheral or soft skills that were addressed outside the classroom. Uh, so, uh, social uh, emotional curriculum was often um, 
implemented uh, individually with students that were dysregulated or out of control, with the thought being that once those fires were put out, they could put, be put back into the classroom where they could continue their learning. Today, social-emotional skills have become nationally recognized as foundational to student achievement. Lake Forest High School has embedded social-emotional growth into its district and building milestones because we value it so highly. Tonight, we're going to touch on four key areas of our wellness work. The social-emotional learning standards within our curriculum, both disco discoveries from both the CSCI and the IYS surveys, and lastly, the continued growth of our mindfulness initiative. Touching briefly on our social emotional curriculum, uh, as I mentioned, um, we've embedded the ISBE social emotional learning standards into uh, the freshman uh, wellness for life curriculum. In the last year, it's expanded to the sophomore wellness classes and the TA training. Our peer training and peer advanced programs uh, run through par our partnership with Cora also have elements of that curriculum within it. And for the first time this year, our freshmen this week will be taking uh, a self uh, a self assessment of social emotional growth towards those learning standards. So we're, we, we've set a, a solid foundation in this regard. Next year, our leadership team will do a school-wide uh, audit of our curriculum to identify other areas and other departments where SEL standards are either evident or there are gaps and look to fill those gaps and embed those standards into curriculum across the school. The last thing I'll say about our social emotional learning standards is that social emotional welfare of our adolescents demands a community-wide approach and so I want to take the opportunity to thank Croya, LEAD, our APT, the Response Center, Erica's Lighthouse, the Art Impact Project, and brave way for their partnerships throughout the years in delivering this to our students. So I'm going to quickly touch upon the uh, comprehensive school climate inventory. So we've been giving this for about seven years pretty consistently, so we got some really good data. Uh, there's 11 dimensions that are rated for students and for parents. There's 13 that are rated for staff personnel. Uh, what we have on this slide is it's kind of three key points of some subgroups that we try to keep an eye on that have over the past couple years um, have come up with some numbers that we find to be uh, a little concerning. Now, none of our numbers were in the negative range. All of our numbers, most of our numbers were in the positive range or the, ne or the uh, neutral range. So the first one is African American students. They possessed the lowest dimension rating at a 2.92 for such a social emotional security. Uh, 17 students who did not identify with any particular race uh, rated 7 out of the 11 dimensions in the neutral range. And then for the second year in a row, our LGBT students rated 4 dimensions in the neutral range. So that consistency is what kind of blur, you know, comes out to us. So the school connectedness, the social emotional security, the social and civic learning, and social media. So those are some subgroups. We are still looking through the data. Um, and wanting to hit as many areas as we can uh, to be very aware of where our subgroups um, within the school really we need to keep an eye on. I'll touch briefly on the IYS. The IYS, or the Illinois Youth Survey, is a st statistically reliable, anonymous, and confidential analysis of student substance use. We uh, administer it every other year. We have data since 2006. We typically look at cohort trends amongst that data. The major takeaways from the 2018 uh, IYS for Lake Forest High School uh, were as follows. Usage rates uh, increase as students age. That's not a surprise, but that trend has followed the last 12, 13 years. Alcohol rates, drinking is down amongst all of our uh, age groups except for a senior class. Marijuana use remains below alcohol rates, but the trajectory is very similar, meaning as our students age, their access and usage of marijuana increases. Vaping is up across Lake Forest High School and across the nation. Uh, we know, though, that many uh, steps have been taken and will continue to be taken. An example of the partnerships that I alluded to previously is that LEAD has come in the last several years and, and spoken to every freshman class about the dangers of vaping and smart decision making. And then the city of Lake Forest enacting an ordinance for ticketing uh, vaping as tobacco possession is another piece in the puzzle of trying to make our students aware of the downsides to vaping. 
housing. Lastly, parents, uh, this, this uh, graph here, these two graphs here, uh, the major upshot for us is parents continue to be identified by their adolescents as the number one person who supports them in times of need and the number one deterrent in terms of substance use. Parental student perception of disapproval, when it goes down, usage goes up. Correlative, not causative necessarily, but we're going to continue to partner with our parents and find every opportunity possible to shed light on the, po the, the power of their influence over our students and their substance use. So mindfulness. Uh, we are over two years into our mindfulness programming. What we do know is how pervasive depression and anxiety is across all communities in this country and, and particularly in schools. Um, what we are concerned about is how much anxiety interferes with students' ability uh, and availability to learn within the classroom. So uh, with mindfulness techniques, we really feel like we can start making headway into some of those areas. So Dr. Matuar, who's our wellness coordinator, uh, has begun this programming uh, just over two years ago. And currently, uh, this year, he's been in 50 classrooms. He's going to be in more before the end of the year. He's been working with athletic teams. Uh, he ran a KTI in which we had 15 teachers attend it, showing mindfulness techniques, so kind of a train-the-trainer model. And then uh, he's got some goals for next year to start working on some curriculum for teachers. Uh, he was also the keynote speaker on the uh, first ever mindfulness in education conference uh, that was held in St. Charles. So we really feel like we're kind of like on the forefront of making headway with our mindfulness program in the state of Illinois. And I'll finish with this last slide, which to me sums it up. Uh, our, our, our students need their hierarchical needs met before they can reach their highest levels of academic achievement. Uh, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight about what is a very uh, important and highly valued topic here. And we want to open it up to any questions that you might have. Thank you. The you sent a, a great deal of material. It's very dense and, and full of a lot of good content, and you ran through the highlights very well, very quickly. Does the board have any questions? No, I, I just want to congratulate you. Know, we cross over a little bit with the Education Committee, and it, it's really been a lot of heavy lifting in the last couple of years, and I think we're starting to get the longer-term trend and really understand it. And I think you both should be commended. It's, you've really done a phenomenal job. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have one question, actually. Uh, and I would, I would echo Tom's comments that um, I think it's worth noting that LFHS didn't have any dimensions for students or staff in the negative range. It doesn't mean there's not more work to be done, but we should pause and, and celebrate that. There was a mention in here that it, for the first time next year, uh, the freshmen will be given an ev evidence-based survey to assess SEL growth. Can you tell us what that involves? What's an evidence-based survey sure. for SEL? Dr. Holland, you want to? Yes, I can do that. I went through a process. This has been one of our goals for a while now. Um, as we know, SEL, um, assessing SEL growth is very difficult for many districts. We've vetted um, different assessments and made sure that it was aligned with uh, CASEL SEL standards, ones that um, are directly aligned with all the work we're doing across the building. And so we are piloting this with our freshmen this week and it really speaks to areas like grit, social awareness, um, decision making, all of the things that connect to standards, the standards that um, we have been focused on implementing. We want to see where our freshmen are with understanding them, but also applying them. And so we've gone through a lot of work, especially in our wellness department, to embed the standards and make sure our students are explicitly learning them and engaging with them. We want to know now how they're internalizing them um, to gauge growth um, with them. So that's what that is. It's research-based in that it is um, nationally normed um, and can provide us some insight about where our kids are at an individual level, but also on um, where they are in comparison to their peers. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, Jen. Yeah, one other question. Um, from previous uh, board meeting, maybe two, three months ago, there was a survey of the individuals at college looking back of their high school. Mm -hmm. Is there a way potentially to incorporate some of their views in terms of the effectiveness of what you're learning within yeah. 
these items as that's, well? That's a great question. Thank you for remembering that. Uh, we actually, uh, Dr. Wallet and I, Dr. Alan Wallet, our Director of Teaching and Learning, sat down today and updated that uh, alumni survey, sent it out last year to just over 200 alumni from Lake Forest High School, got uh, 50 responses, and as I did mention a few, a few months ago, we looked at some of the trends. Uh, a lot of what they talked about was f feeling very academically prepared. Uh, much of what uh, came out from our asking what could we do better was preparing students for the diverse world that, that is out there, uh, helping students uh, socially emotionally, adapting to a new social environment, uh, time management, and some of those skills directly related to these standards. So we are, are going to send it out again next week and uh, utilize that trend data this summer to start looking at what senior opportunities might we be able to provide students, students and their families uh, as we know that they're leaving uh, the, the cozy confines of Lake Forest and, and prepare them. So thank you for making that connection. And uh, one more thing from my standpoint, I know you touched on the parents briefly and, and without leaving out any of the groups because I know LFHS and League and Croya, there's a lot of coordinated piece. Um, I think you know, as part of the mandate looking from vaping through fill in the blank usage, uh, there's an incredible lack of uh, parent acknowledgement of their role and I think continuing it's not your mandate necessarily to educate the parents directly, but, but indirectly to try to communicate that to the community. I know it's been a, a focus to a degree, uh, but it is an incredible oversight that parents don't recognize their own role in those graphs and the outcomes of those graphs. And I, I completely agree. We will be sending out, in partnership with LEAD in October, a survey to parents around their perceptions of student use and their perceptions of their contributions to that. Some of that data will continue to inform us as we go forward. Thank you both very much. Thank very you. helpful. Have a great evening. Uh, we are now ready to move on to committee reports. Uh, let's start with the Education Committee. Dr. Nemicus. Uh, we have not met since the last board meeting. Next is the Finance and Operations Committee. We also have not met since the last board meeting. We will next meet on June 24th. Policy Committee. Mr. Mormon. We're trying to schedule a meeting in the next week or two. So we, we have not met since our last board meeting. Excellent. Liaison reports. Legislative Ed Red report. Mr. Noble. Thank you. Um, there's not too many uh, bills updates that need to be mentioned from uh, your, your, I think, uh, update from last month. But there is one particular from the uh, House and Senate bill. It's uh, Senate Bill 690. And basically what this is um, is an idea around a property tax freeze. And it is tied into the additional legislation that's going forward from the Senate, which ties into changing the state flat tax into the state progressive tax. Um, if that passes or gets through the houses, then it will tie these two bills together, and then there will need to be a state referendum on the t flat tax to the progressive tax because it is a constitution issue. So until that is ratified, um, will this necessarily come to come to bear, but what this would do is basically in 2022, this would start to look at our, um, any adjustments that we can basically add to our uh, property taxes, those would be frozen. And they'd be frozen under a couple different circumstances, and it would rely basically that the only time we'd be able to get additional funding would be through bonds or levies or those types of things with the community. So it's something that I don't think we need to do anything at the moment. Um, there's no specific recommendations until we get more questions answered and more developments uh, occur. Um, and when those come up, I'll be more than happy to uh, up update you all. And if there are things there, then we may be tasked to changing our financial modeling a little bit in terms of the out years, in terms of how we currently look at things. Perfect. Thank you very much. NSSED, Mr. Mormon. Unlike the other committees, NSSED did meet last Wednesday. And one of the things we did, we, we finally approved the third iteration of our uh, financial budget for the next uh, fiscal year. Uh, that budget will be uh, posted for the next 30 days if anybody wants to come in and take a look at it. But like John Hermes knows, almost nobody comes, or actually nobody comes to actually review uh, the budget. But it will be posted for the next 30 days before uh, being signed in. Um, along with um, um, the two gentlemen we're just talking about the social emotional wellness uh, next Tuesday morning there's an opportunity to have a conversation with uh, Madeline Will for those that don't know her she was the first basically special ed director 
in the uh, Education Department sec under the Secretary of Education, uh, appointed in 1983 by uh, Ronald Reagan. She'll be speaking at Gorton. Uh, at, let's see, it'll be from nine th next. Let's see, next Tuesday, May 21st, from 9:30 to 10:30, at the Gorton Community Center. She's really an inspiring. And she, if there's anything you want to know about special education, she's the one that uh, really has all the uh, all the answers. And so it's really be a good thing if you have time to uh, come see that next Tuesday. Thank you very much. We're now ready to move on to the action items. <clears throat> the first uh, item is approval of assistant director of special, special education one-year contract. Uh, let me see. I'm, I ask for a motion. We have a motion and a second, and then we discuss. So, May, I have a motion to approve the assistant director of special education one-year contract. I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the assistant director of special education one-year contract. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Davis? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Mr. Lang or not here. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next on the agenda is approval of Director of Business Services, CSBO, one year enabling agreement. May I have a motion to approve the Director of Business Services, CSBO, one-year enabling agreement? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the Director of Business Services, CSBO, one-year enabling agreement. And may I have a second? Second. Any comments, questions? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Noble? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Ms. Sinzer? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is the approval of a Shared Services Administrator 2019-2020 compensation. May I have a motion to approve the Shared Services Administrator 2019-2020 compensation? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the Shared Service Administrator 2019-2020 compensation recommendation. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Questions? Comments? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Ms. Sinzer? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Dr. Nemicus. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is the approval of compensation for non-union support staff. May I have a motion to approve the compensation for non-union support staff? I move the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the compensation, compensation for non-union support staff. Second. Thank you. Any questions, comments? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Ms. Sinzer? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Next is the approval of a textbook purchase in the amount not to exceed $150,000 per policy 2 colon 20. May I have a motion to approve the textbook purchase in an amount not to exceed $150,000 per policy two colon 20. I move uh, that the Lake Forest uh, Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the textbook purchase in an amount not to exceed $150,000 per policy two colon 20. May I have a second? Second. Comments, questions? May I have a roll oh, call vote please? I, I oh, yes. Uh, the six year online agreement, is that a standard uh, piece that's renewable uh, or is that like end of life that was the only piece I didn't understand because I know we purchased the textbooks they're replacing ones that are out of date uh, and are out of print I guess not say out of date but out of print because they're math textbooks but I didn't know what the six-year piece is is that then renewed or cost to renew or does it then just become a license that we own or what that situation is is that a question for Jen or, or Shayla uh, 
It, it just says in the cost, it'll, it says uh, six years of online student admissions. And I didn't know if after that we then have to re-up and relicense, or is it an automatic renewal, or if there's an extra cost after six years? I just wasn't clear from the approximate cost piece. I'm not sure, but I can get back to you. Usually textbooks are updated, um, definitely within a six-year span. So I would assume that um, we would, they would reach out to us regarding any updates. Technology changes every year, so six years is a long time. <laughs> Yeah, so I wasn't sure if it was too long, too short, or just right. That was part of the question. Like, if that's sort of the standard for the online edition piece, and then look back at where we're at. So it sounds like that's the standard. Right, I can follow up with you, though. Yeah, no, no problem. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Inzer? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Motion carries. Next is approval of the West Campus boiler bid in the amount of uh, $552,000. May I have a motion to approve the West Campus boiler bid in the amount of $552,000? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the West Campus boiler bid in the amount of $552,000. May I have a second? Second. Comments? Yeah, I noticed when we were going through this, and I guess Jen was probably for you, um, we're going with the most expensive option three, it looks like, as opposed to option two, and putting in a, you know, a third boiler, whereas, you know, it's always been two boilers. Yeah, let me just give you a little bit of summary on that. This building was originally designed to have a three boiler system. In fact, three boiler, three pads were actually put into the to the basement to support that. The third boiler was value engineered out of the project in 2006. Um, on review of that now, it seems like that may have contributed to the part of our failing boiler situation that we're currently in. We should have gotten much, much many more many more enjoyable years out of the boilers that we are now looking to replace if you recall we replaced one is an emergency last fall um, we knew the second one was on life support um, and the engineers recommendation was really the load of this building needs to sit on three boilers and not two um, if not we would find ourselves in a very similar situation in a less than life expectancy of those existing boilers so typically your boilers should live much longer than 15 to 20 years so three boilers uh, distribute the load, should take care of it. I also think that the proposal, uh, the bid recommended before you today, takes care of some of the other things down there. I call it the graveyard of boiler parts. Um, there are some things that need to be cleaned up downstairs and hauled out and removed. I think this is finally getting us to where we should be in this building. This is doing it right. And I know it's an expensive proposition, but it shall outlive well beyond uh, all of our service here. And Jen, is this, the, I don't see the start date scope. Did we get it, is this, if we approve it tonight, are we on the spectrum on the docket with the new boiler purchases to get it done by the fall like we had hoped for? That is correct. So this would put us in the queue to get those delivered on site, start the install, um, final balancing. Of course, we have to wait until we kick them up in the fall, which is usually September or October, depending on how cold the weather is, or if it never warms up, I guess it's like July. Um, but yes, this should put us uh, for an install so that we will be well set by the time the heating season comes around. Anyone else? May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Davis? Aye. Ms. Inzer? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is approval of roofing for East and West Campus. May I have a motion to approve the East and West Campus roofing bid in the amount of $274,850 for the total project? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the East and West Campus roofing bid in the amount of $274,850 for the total project. May I have a second? Second. Comments, questions? May I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Nemkus? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Ms. Sinzer? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Motion carries. 
Next is the approval of the authentic expressions one-year contract. May I have a motion to approve the authentic expressions one-year contract? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the authentic expressions one-year contract. May I have a second? Second. second. Mike, can you describe just briefly what authentic expressions does? I know that we've approved it in the past. Yeah, authentic expressions, uh, we have a wide range of students that uh, whose needs to express themselves can be met frequently with use of uh, specific types of technology. And these are almost always one-on-one, -on -one, try to figure out how does the student best express him or herself. And uh, this is somebody that we contract with in order to do that one-on-one -on -one diagnosis and then the creation of the design of those things. Sometimes it's for writing, sometimes it's for speech, it's for a wide range of different student needs. Thank you. Any questions or comments? I have a question. I know this is her third year under contract with us. And also in reading the documents, I know that she is training others to do her work. Would this be the last year we anticipate this contract? Yeah, sure, I'm going to defer to Dr. Holland on that, whether you think that uh, we'll be having her come back. I, will, I would need to check. Um, right now, every year, our students present um, new needs and different needs at times, so some of it depends on our students who come in. Um, the best way for someone to train our staff is if there is a, an actual need that a student has and we have not, we cannot predict oftentimes and sometimes it's based on um, we'll have someone stay on um, for contractual work based on a new need um, that a student um, might have who is coming into the district. So I can definitely follow up on that but some, some of it is based on um, our students who come to the district and what we learn their needs are and some of them were obligated all in all cases we're obligated to make sure we're meeting their needs and sometimes we have the capacity and sometimes we don't and and, and Shayla uh, the other thing that might help uh, Jenny uh, I know it's an up to contract and I don't recall the line item piece I don't know if, if Jen has it in her computer what the first two years actual expenditure was um, yeah so maybe we can circle back and just just give her the context because I know it's an up to contract, so it's not that's a m amount not to exceed essentially, um, and I don't know that we've used the full amount in the prior two years. I don't I don't believe we did, if I recall the line item stuff. But. That's a really good example of uh, how useful a consultant can be because the odds of having if this were a full time employee in the district. We may or may not from one year to the next have a level of need and so we can really dial in what we need with uh, a, a consultant like this. May I have a roll call vote please? Mr. Mormon? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Motion carries. Next is approval of the GL Educational Consulting one-year contract. May I have a motion to approve the GL Educational Consulting one-year contract? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the GL Educational Consulting one-year contract. May I have a second? Second. Same request, Mr. Simic. Can you explain this one to us? Yeah, one of the, uh, of, of the, one of the most complex things that we do in the area of primarily in special education is when we have a student who has extremely complex needs, whether they, they are, um, uh, whether it's a social emotional need or um, edu a specific educational need, but they will be a uh, student we typically call outplaced and an outplacement coordinator is somebody that works with, with families and students and staff, again, on a one-on-one -on -one basis to try to tailor the, the location for these services to the uh, specific needs of the individual student. Uh, not infrequently, these are students in crisis, and then, if, uh, as we all know, if, if a child is in crisis, the entire family is in crisis. And so um, it's incredibly time intensive, and this is somebody that uh, we have been working with for the past several years because the need was uh, simply too great a burden on our um, high school administrative staff. 
Thank you. Any questions or comments? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Mormon? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Ms. Sinzer? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Motion carries. Next is the approval of tuition based transition students. May I have a motion to approve the tuition based transition students? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the tuition based transition students. May I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Jen, my only question is all we do when we take in students from other districts is uh, we charge what it costs to provide services. This is not a for-profit operation on our part, is that correct? Uh, what we do is we cover our costs. We don't add any additional teachers, but we do our full programming, full space. Um, if they do have a, um, a teaching assistant that needs to come with them, it is provided by um, their home district as well. We also provide their transportation to and from their work opportunities or community opportunities. So they kind of become part of our, our program. But yes, it's not to make a huge profit. We actually come at our tuition. We take the average between uh, NSSED and CEDAW. So if CEDAW would be more cost effective for them, NSSED would cost them more. We take the average. But it allows us then to fully utilize the resources that we have. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Uh, may I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Lane? I'm sorry. <laughs> Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Motion carries. Next is approval of a settlement agreement for student A. May I have a motion to approve the settlement agreement for student A? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the settlement agreement for student A. May I have a second? Second. Questions, comments? May I have a roll call vote, please? Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Motion carries. Next is the approval of the consolidated district plan. May I have a motion to approve the administration recommendation for the ISBE required consolidated district plan in order to release grant funds for the 2019-2020 school year? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District Board 115 Education approve the administration recommendation for the ISBE required consolidated district plan in order to release grant funds for the 2019-2020 school year. May I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? This sounded really scary. Thank you, Dr. Holland, for the memo explaining it, which was a big, don't worry about it. We appreciate that. Uh, may I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, last is the approval of the Human Resources Report. May I have a motion to approve the Human Resources Report as presented? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the Human Resources Report as presented. May I have a second? Second. Questions, comments? May I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Mormon? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Dr. Nemicus? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. Motion carries. We now move to the consent agenda items with a reminder that any item may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of a board member. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items including approval of disbursements, payrolls and financial statements for March 2019, minutes of a regular meeting and workshop April 8, 2019, minutes of an executive session April 8, 2019, minutes of a special board meeting, old board, new board of April 22, 2019, minutes of an executive session April 22, 2019, disposal of auto, audio recordings May 8, 2017, May I have a motion? I move that the Lake Forest Community High School District 115 Board of Education approve the consent agenda items as presented. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Zinzer? Aye. Dr. Namicus? Aye. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Mormon? Aye. Mr. Weinbrenner? Aye. Mr. Noble? Aye. 
Motion carries. Thank you. We are now through the uh, agenda items for approval. Um, I will note that we have two FOIA requests. The first was from the Chicago Tribune. It was of a commercial nature and that status is complete. We also received one from NBC5. It was also of a commercial nature and the status is complete. Announcements. Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019, there is a band concert, the last of the year, in the RMA at 7.30 p.m. Thursday, May 23rd, there is a choral concert in the RMA, the last of the season, at 7.30 p.m. Monday, May 27th, 2019, is Memorial Day, no school. Wednesday, May 29th, 2019, is the last orchestra concert of the year in the RMA at 7.30 p.m. Thursday, May 30th, 2019, is the last day for seniors. June 6th through the 11th, 2019, is second semester final exams. June 11th, 2019, is the last day for students because of our snow days. Our next meeting uh, of the board is Monday, June 10th, 2019, Board of Education meeting at 7 p.m. in the Lake Forest High School boardroom at the West Campus. Before we adjourn, I wanna thank all the students who actually hung through the entire meeting. Thank you for coming to Democracy in Action. I was kind of hoping maybe we were gonna have like a flash mob kind of a situation, but I'm guessing that's not gonna happen. So. Uh, Ms. Davis, I have a point I'd like to raise. Oh, you yes, neglected sir. June 8th at 2.30 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my goodness, which is graduation. June 8th, We're graduation. working hard. Mr. Simic, as usual, the formula for the weather. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn the Lake Forest Community High School District uh, School Board meeting? So moved. May I have a second? Second. May I have a voice vote, please? All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.